morning everyone uh, i hope everybody is good uh, so let's just mostly continue our lecture from the previous that we were doing it and for the others they will catch up from the recorded video okay there we go So uh, the last thing that we were doing, we calculated, we come up with a certain project, with a certain circ project with some conditions like mutual exclusive with a cutoff period. And we use some investment criteria uh, to evaluate certain projects. And we finalized and we concluded that NPV is the best uh, investment criteria, is the best uh, alternative that can be used to measure or to evaluate a certain project. But uh, in terms of consistency with owner's wealth maximization, uh, MPV and IRR are mostly preferred over other methods, but if you just select uh, between MPV and IRR, the MPV is the best. So the large companies actually they use mostly to uh, MPV and IRR to evaluate the uh, projects like over the payback period and the reason why they use the IRR the IRR is gives you a simple interpretation whether the project should be accepted or not but uh, they're trying to see whether it's consistent or not that they use most of the time in the case when it is consistent but when it's not consistent they are not using it that that's the reason but they make their own and their last decision based on their NPV estimation because the MPV is the only the investment criteria that adds the value to the project actually, to the invested project. So, uh, so far we have been calculating this uh, MPV using ready given cash flows. But the question that you may ask uh, is how the firms or the financial managers, they come up with these cash flows. How do they calculate? I mean where it's derived from actually but what we used to do we used to go with the ready given cash flows like we are given some cash flows for the future and we were calculating them so my question is here they all of you may ask okay but it's good that we learned and how to calculate mpv irr payback rule and other investment criteria but we learn learn as well how to choose the uh, according to the best investment criteria and Another uh, more impo most important question, how the firms, how the corporations or financial managers, they come up with these cash flows. How do they calculate and what estimation they are based actually? So this is what we're gonna go through. Uh, cash flows uh, is given in the following way. Investment outlay is the investment cost after tax operating cash flow after tax operating cash flow for each year so there are some projections are made and for, apart from that projection we will be getting this uh, after tax cash flows how these are calculated plus at the end of the year there should be terminal non-operating cash flow so how they are calculated we're gonna go through the example actually we are giving the example in here we're gonna apply that example and we're gonna understand, understand better so uh, basically, when it comes to the first cost here, we use uh, the investment outlay is, we start with capital expenditure, the investment itself. Minus, uh, actually it's not a minus, it's just addition to that investment cost because minus to minus will give you the additional amount, summation. So it is uh, increasing net working capital. And we know that in net working capital is difference between the current assets and current liability. So if there is an increase in that, like if your current asset is more than the current liability, that you should add this investment cost to initial outlay. This is where, how we come up with the first investment cost. Okay, when our uh, investment is negative, this is what we used to calculate, like they were, subtracting when we take the present value of each cash flow, then we subtract the investment. So this is what, how we calculate. But how do we calculate the after tax operating cash flow? It is the here. Sales, uh, 
As you can see here, it's an income statement formulation. It's an income statement equation. Uh, you start with the sales, like uh, the sales of your services, the sales of your products and so on. Uh, then you go with the cash operating expenses, like cost of goods sold and so on. Then you have depreciation, that is expense that are allowed for the tax purposes. Then uh, we get from here EBIT, earnings before interest and tax. Uh, or we get uh, operating income before the tax, we can say that. After subtraction from the sales, the cash and depreciation, we subtract, we get some amount here. Then we subtract the tax, like uh, apply the tax on the derived amount. Then we get the operating income after taxes. After that, we have to add the depreciation back. This is how it's calculated. Why we're adding the depreciation back? Because depreciation is a non-cash item. So when you project the cash flow, for purpose of evaluation, uh, then you have to add it back because it's being as a non-cash item. So equals to after tax operating cash flow. This is what we actually be looking for. This is, uh, if you come up here, like after cash. So this is where I understood how we get it, like investment uh, that you merit, plus if there is an increase in, what do you call it, uh, in networking capital. And if there's some other appreciation in land and so on, we're gonna add it here. And after that, we're gonna uh, add, we're gonna uh, project the cash flows after the tax until the point here. We, here we should add as well something, which is terminal non-operating cash flows. We're gonna see what does the non-operating cash flow mean here as a terminal amount. Once you add it to the last year of your projected cash flow after tax, then you're gonna come up with a certain projected cash flows that you used to calculate your MPV based on already given cash flow. So the same thing we're gonna do with this, the last stage we're deriving these things. But the, for the last year, we should add the terminal and operating cash flow. So uh, it might seem that it's a bit complicated, but when you get into calculation, it's gonna be more easier. Don't worry about it. So, uh, Terminal year after tax, like that, the amount that we are adding to that we are adding to the to the last year of the projected cash flow, it is salvage value, uh, and all of you should be familiar with what does the salvage value mean. Salvage value is when you buy a certain uh, equipment or fixed asset and you estimate the depreciation amount. And at the end of the year, when you're about uh, depreciate everything, and you have to sell that item. When you sell it there, you sell for a certain price. A certain price is called the salvage value. The value that you are going to sell at the end of the year of the project itself. Add you as a, like, what will be your return on networking capital? I mean, the increase in networking capital that will give you a uh, amount of non-operating cash flow. So the terminal after tax non-operating cash flow. So you are at. So the summary of the formulas are here. Basically what you should know if you have taken an accounting course and you should have taken it actually, you had to take it. But uh, here, what is that? Income statement procedure we use it. It's very easy to remember, like all revenues minus all expenses and there, there is a, structure of the income statement that you should follow. Sales, cost of goods, all depreciation, then you get EBIT, earnings before income, and then you apply the in tax on that. And after that, you do, uh, generate the operating income itself, so on. And this is how we calculate terminal year of cash flow. And this is the summary of the formulation, like what we do basically for all cases. So here we give an example, but I want to go with another example. Uh, I will go with another example and we'll continue with this. Okay, I'm going to take the example from the book. And if it's possible, I may ask you to open the Excel spreadsheet. You can continue, go with me so you can understand better. So I open the Excel here and I put the number of the years here. I should start with uh, year zero. 
one, two, three, four, and five years. So this is how I'm arranging it. Then uh, my first, I should go with the investment outlay. Outlays, let me make it bigger. So this is the years that I'm going to calculate. This is investment outlays. They are consisting of fixed cap capital, the amount that we invest, and some changes in networking capital. So they consist of fixed capital and change in networking capital. Basically, this is how it should start actually. Your investment cost, your investment outlays should be consisting of your in, uh, fixed capital, the amount that you invest and change in networking capital. Let's read what is given. So the investment outlay includes $200,000. So this is how much for fixed capital item, this is how much we spend it. And this outlay includes 25,000 for non-depreciable land plus 175 for equipment that will be depreciated straight line to the zero for the five years. So this 200,000 is divided in two parts, $25,000 for land and 175,000 for the equipment that you purchase for your business, where you're expanding your business, where you're starting a new business. You have any questions? No. Okay, thank you. So uh, the investment in networking capital is the net investment in the short-term assets required for the investment. So it is the difference between current assets and the current liabilities. So this is the investment receivable and inventory needed for the less short-term payables generated for the project. So in this case, the project is required 50,000 of current assets, but generated 20,000 in current liabilities. So we are looking for a change in networking capital, which is difference between the current assets and current liabilities, which is 30,000. Here you go. And the total investment outlay should be equal to 230,000. So let's apply to the Excel file. So our investment cost in year zero with a fixed capital was 200,000. Let me put a dollar sign here, $200,000, but it's a negative number. And change in networking capital, 30,000. How did we get it? It's 50 minus 20,000. Okay, this is our investment cost and the total amount is equal to 230,000. So your total investment cost is equal to 230,000. Sorry, it's 230 million, two and a half, 230,000. Okay, here we go. So this is, we are concerned that our investment cost. Now, after that, uh, we have to calculate uh, annual after tax operating cash flows. And to do that, we need to come up with certain uh, income statement structure. As you remember, I saw, showed you in the uh, slides, which is, which is sales minus all the expenses that you're gonna come up with income. So first you start with uh, sales. Sales, then we have uh, cash operating expenses. And what is sales, what is cash operating expenses? And then we should have depreciation amount. Depreciation amount. And we'll see it, okay. But it starts from the year one, not from the year zero. In the year zero, we make investment, okay? In year zero, we make investment. But in year one, we should start calculating, like our sales, like how much, let's say you're producing a certain number of products, certain goods, tangible goods. And what is your projection? What do you think, how many you will produce in year one, in year two, in year three, in year four and five? And the produced amount should be timed by price that you will be able to sell. 
if you're grown, let's say, uh, if you put, if you plant apple uh, garden, then that apple garden produce, let's say, certain tons of amount of apple. When you just collect those apple, you package it and you sell it. And for each ton, you receive certain amount. So uh, that projection should be given. Each year, the sales will be 220,000. So, and the cash operating expenses will be 90,000. So we are given. So each year, you're assuming that your sales will be same for each year, for during the five years. And the uh, or cash operating expense will be this, like 90,000. So the annual depreciation for 175, we should calculate it. It is calculated by 35,000 per year, as it is like uh, lasting, as you can see here. 175,000 for equipment, that'll be depreciated straight line to zero five years. So this 175 should be divided by 30. That should give you the annual depreciation amount. So uh, we are given here sales, 220,000 each year. The 90,000 will be the ca uh, cash operating expense and annual depreciation will be 35,000. How did we get it? It's, $175,000 that you paid for the equipment itself divided by the number of years that it will be depreciated. So I'm making it dollar sign. And this will be the similar for five years. So far, there is nothing complicated. It's just straightforward, just applying the formulas. Okay, let me make it like this so that, okay, now we calculate it. Now uh, we can derive from here income operating from operations that comes before paying the tax. Now we have to derive some income before. We call it actually earnings before tax. If there is interest, it's earnings before interest and tax, but it's earnings, EBIT, earnings before tax. Or we can call it as operating income before tax. We can call it in this way, but let me make it a bit smaller. So, uh, this is why we call EBT, or we can call as earnings before tax or operating income before taxes. So how we derive it is just very simple. From the sales, we subtract all the cost and cost is the cash operating expenses that has been paid to produce that product minus depreciation cost. And this is what we get it. And this is all same for all years. Then we apply the tax. And the tax amount uh, should be, if, if I'm not mistaken, 38%. We're going to check it. 38% of this amount. Okay. So 0 0.38 times of this. This is the tax we're going to pay. Let me check it. I might be mistaken about the tax. Okay. There's some questions, I think. Okay, it can be 40, it's like, it doesn't matter. It can be 38, it can be 40. There's no, like it changes from country to country. In some countries, 25, and if it's US, it's 50%. If it's Europe, like 55 and so on. So it changed even from the business. But it's not a just case. It can be 40, but I don't remember what was the, in the text, but let me see it. Just a second. Yeah, it's 40%. Yeah, I didn't pay attention to that. I didn't come to that. Yeah, it's 40. But it can be any percentage, okay? But the matter is to calculate the way of getting that uh, tax amount. Thank you for reminding me. So 38,000 will be your taxes. I will highlight like this. Let me highlight the cost with the uh, red. And after that, I'm gonna derive operating income after taxes. So operating income after tax. Okay. 
57,000. I hope everybody is following me. Please, guys, if you have got any questions, do not hesitate. And do not feel shame or anything. Just go and ask directly. If you want me to repeat something, just tell it back. And in here, we should add it back, the depreciation amount, because it's non-cash item, it should be added back. Depreciation amount is added back. for the purpose to projection because it's non-cash item and we did not incur this direct loss uh, because the appreciation is one, uh, it's kind of indirectly incurred. So we should add it back and we are coming up after tax operating cash flow. After tax operating cash flow. So you're gonna come up with plus this amount. So Operating income after tax plus depreciation, you're gonna derive after tax operating cash flows, 92,000. And this is how we calculate. And if you remember at the end of the year, in the year five here, we should have added back uh, the terminal year after the tax non-operating cash flow. So there's an amount which is called a terminal of non-operating cash flow it's just flow not flows okay and we are adding to the last sentence okay we should be able to calculate it and here we go so once we pay the, all the taxes at the end of the fifth year the company will sell all the fixed capital assets in the case that fixed capital assets are sold for $50,000, imagine we are selling for $50,000, which represents the gain of $25,000 over remaining book value, which of $25,000. So the gain of $25,000 is taxed. So when we sell it uh, for $50,000, and that $25,000 is our gain. How do you come out with this 25,000 gain? How do we calculate? Because our land is 25,000 already. And when we sell it, we just take into consideration, then we have to pay the tax on it. So uh, when we pay the tax, so we have to calculate the tax amount. Uh, tax is 40% on the profit, like pro tax profit. The remaining uh, for fixed capital asset will be uh, 40,000, like 50, you sell it for 50 and you pay 10,000 taxes and the remaining amount is uh, 40,000. Plus we said there is a return on investment. So let me just type something in here. So your terminal operating cash flow is salvage, salvage value after tax salvage value after tax and the salvage value is the amount you are selling for when you used your equipment and it's not uh you cannot use it anymore to produce any goods and services that equipment you so when you sell it that uh, sold amount is an uh, after tax deduction if there was some gain you have to identify and of course you have to take into consideration there was a return on networking capital so this thing should be added at the last year. So we are adding back like 40,000. But how did we get this 40,000? We said it is 50,000. We are selling for 50,000. Selling for 50,000. And there is a gain of 25,000 dollars times and it is taxed at 40 percent then 50,000 minus 40 10,000 that derives 40,000 and return on networking capital is given at the beginning of the question here. Uh, it's 30,000.
So 30,000. And the total amount of terminal cash flow, total amount is equal to seventy thousand. This is what we calculate, and at the end, you should come up with all operating cash flows, including the the investment out there in order to calculate the how do you call it the NPV so total we can call them as cash flows after tax so cash flows after tax that we use it and this will be here uh, we are calculating the aim is actually to calculate the cash flows after tax is our investment cost was here. We're just gonna drag it here, 130,000 minus, it should be negative because we are investing it. We understood how to calculate and we are putting all the operating cash flows here and until the year four and the year five, we should take into consideration the operating cash flow after tax in the year five plus the terminal non-operating cash flow as well. So this is our cash flows that we were looking for, that we were actually deriving to calculate the NPV based an IRR to come up with a certain decision, whether to accept the project or not. So before that, we used to calculate with the ready given cash flows. Now we have we are we know how to calculate and how to derive those cash flows. Now we can work out on that actually. So now we can calculate NPV and let's say IRR, internal rate of return. So the NPV, it's simple that we used to calculate is we're opening the formula of NPV. We're taking this all, but we forgot something. What was the interest rate? 40%. No, 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 no. Interest rate is the tar uh, it's ca cost of capital. I think it was 8%. Okay, doesn't matter. Let's make it 8%. Uh, the 40% is a uh, tax rate, but our interest rate, the required rate of return, rate, required rate is, let's say, 8%. It can be 10, it can be 15, but for simplicity, we assume it's 8%. So uh, we just call, uh, get off MPV. We need to make it, okay, why I'm doing this? MPV, open, uh, no, we should start with interest. Interest is 8%, 0.08. Uh, we then highlight the cash flows. And of course we need to subtract the investment cost. I put plus here, again, I'm still repeating when you, because we have got negative sign in here to calculate the NPV, is, the NPV is just calculating all present cash flows summation of, of all present cash flows. And then you have to subtract the manually, the investment cost in order to get the real and the net present value actually. But in here I put the plus because our number is negative. So mathematically it should uh, subtract actually. So uh, our investment cost is 184. Thousand dollar. So we generate this much money actually. And our IRR, when you do the IRR, you should consider all the cash flows, guys. Close it. So our IRR is here, is 32 point something. Uh, guys, this number might be different in the book from the book actually. Why? Because we may use, maybe we used a uh, different interest rate, different required rate of return, but still we can use any of the rate. Uh, more or less that we are doing actually this uh, the, in the correct way of the calculation. But let us test when the NPV is using the IRR itself. How, what will be the NPV using the IRR rate? So, come up with a certain decision. Now, we put the IRR rate, we select these cash flows, 
plus investment cost. So as you can see, our IRR is correct. So because when the IRR is greater than cost of capital and when the IRR is used in the NPVs instead of the rate of return, we're gonna get our NPV equal to zero. This is, I put it here, MPV with IRR. So here we go. This is our example that was given in the book, but let's proceed with the example, which is given in the slides. So in here, uh, suppose, by the way, do you have any questions? Everything is clear. This was our aim to calculate NPV and IRR. So we accept the project. We can undertake this certain project if it's expansion. Okay. Uh, guys, now we are doing with the expansion project or the, with a new project, but there is a case, as you remember, uh, at the beginning of the lecture, I said there, there are different categories of the projects for the back capital budgeting. One is replacement cost, there's a new products, expansion project. So we were dealing with the expansion of the new product, let's say. But if it's replacement cost, uh, it should be treated a bit differently. We're going to discuss them tomorrow, the replacement cost. But I want to continue to do to make one more example with the expansion so that you can put everything a uh, uh, good picture in your mind, actually. <clears throat> so suppose the company has the opportunity to bring out a new product. So uh, now we saw with the book, it was expansion. Now we are going with a project that is bringing a new product to the industry. Okay. We are doing something different now. Uh, now, the initial cost of the asset is $100 million. <clears throat> so we're going to use the same table. This is what I like in Excel. Once you put all the formulas and you change the numbers, everything is being calculated automatically. This is what I really I like it in Excel. So that's why I always prefer using the Excel over the financial calculator. Now, uh, the initial cost of the asset is 100 million. So this is our initial cost. The company's networking capital would increase by 10 million. So there's an increase in our networking capital, which is the difference between the current asset and current liability. So it's given that calculation. And the new product is estimated to have a useful life for years. So it will be four years to calculate the depreciation amount and which time has an asset would be sold for 5 million. So our salvage value will be 5 million, okay? Why we need it? We know that we need it to calculate the terminal value of non-operating cash flow. It's a salvage value plus change in networking capital. And this is where you make the money actually from at the end of the fifth year. And you're gonna add it to your cash flow that you just calculated. Okay, but in here we're gonna have uh, not five years, but four years. So it will be reduced to four. The management expects company sale to increase by 120, by $120 million in the first year, 160 in the second, 140 in the third, and in trailing to the 50 million by the fourth year because the competitors have fully launched a competitive product so our sales reduced actually. And operating expenses are expected to be 70% of sales. The depreciation is based on the asset life of three years. Okay. Our depreciation should be considered when we calculate depreciation, we should use three years instead of four years. Okay. Our project lasts for four years, but our depreciation of equipment will be of our asset that we purchased should be counted for three years. If required rate of return of project is 8% and company's tax rate is 35, should the company invest in the new product? And why and why not? 
Okay, now we need to do the same thing. We should generate, our job is to calculate the NPV, but to calculate the NPV, we need to know what is the after tax operating cash flows. This is how we should calculate. This is what we should do actually to calculate it. So let's apply. Okay, guys, uh, I'm going to save this one because you may need it. I'm going to upload it in Moodle. So you may need to know wh what are the formulas that we are using. But let me just copy and put it here. Just put it here. And I said we need only four years, okay? We don't need uh, five years. It's, it's going to be four years, okay? So our terminal cash flow with a salvage value will be here. And we're going to estimate our depreciation for three years. <clears throat> now let me just okay i'm not gonna so let us start okay i'm closing this one i don't need it now our initial cost is 100 million our initial cost is 100 million Investment costs in total gonna be, who can tell me? So we we'll, in here we put- 110. Yes, 110, very good, because we are just considering changing networking capital, 10,000 here. So our initial cost is here, okay. We are adding this to this oops because we're gonna see if you put a subtraction okay so this is our initial cost what about the sales sales are given here and as you can see the sales are changing uh, it's different from the example it's large it starts with 120 and it continues with 160, 140, and 50. Okay, let's apply. 160, 120, 160, 140, and 50,000. I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, shouldn't we actually um make a plus to change in networking capital as it is positive oh 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 it's no it should be negative sign true true it should be additional it's it's still we got what it's our investment cost should be total 110 and it's a change in networking capital and it shouldn't be uh like uh we are the purpose of finding the investment capital because it shows that how much money we invested in how much we invested in actually in current assets that is considered to be as uh, investment cost as well when we calculate the investment cost and it should be negative and we okay but why it and put the minus in here okay make it like this so we are adding up our investment cost should be $110,000, okay? But it should be negative. But if I use summation equation, but it shouldn't give me, there it is. Correct. Okay. So keep in mind, our investment outlay in total should include the fixed investment in fixed capital and investment in current uh, networking capital which is current asset minus current liabilities. But uh, the net working capital has increased. Why it yes. is a negative Yeah, yeah it's increased. Yeah, it's always increases. If it's decreased, if it's decreased, that, that means that we have not made any investment 
in the assets. That should be positive in here. If it was a reduction, that means that your current liabilities are more than the current asset. That means that you borrowed money rather than investing. Oh, okay, I got this. Okay, got it? Yep. Uh, when it's increased, that means you're spending the money. When it's decreased, uh, you're getting the money from the banks or any debtors or creditors. Okay, thank you for your questions. Okay, now uh, we projected sales. Good, there's no problem with the sales. Uh, then uh, the new product is estimated to have the useful life of four years, at which the time asset would be sold for 5 million. Okay, uh, it falls to 50 million and there's operating expenses are expected to be 70% of sales and depreciation based on the asset life of three years under a uh, modified accelerated cost recovery system. So this is another system, how to calculate uh, the depreciation. We're gonna see it, but let's go with the 70% of the sales. That means that uh, we have our sales in here and our operating cash expenses should be 70% uh, of this amount. So what we do basically is just 0 0.70 times and 35,000. Okay, uh, guys, uh, now uh, let's do it uh, for this depreciation methodology. I'm gonna keep it to the last moment. Uh, I want you to consider that it's a straight line depreciation to zero, like a straightforward calculation. Uh, we have 100 million, we should divide by just uh, three years. That will give us a straight line depreciation. Then we're gonna apply at this methodology. So let's first apply the methodology which is given as a straight line, like in a previous example. And then we will apply this methodology as well. We'll see how our cash flow changes. Then we're gonna com come up with a certain comments. It's very important to understand how the depreciation methodology affects your cash flow projection and how it affects your taxes that you pay. So we applying for a uh, depreciation straight line zero, which is uh, 100 million divided by three years. So uh, 100 million, 100,000, sorry, divided by three years is 33,000. 33,000, 33,000. In here, we don't have anything, okay? This is uh, when we use uh, depreciation methodology as straight okay, line to zero. But uh, we will use another methodology as well, and we will see how it affects. Okay, we, this is depreciation we calculate. And in the fourth year, we don't have, because we said it's gonna be depreciated in three years, and the, in the last year, we are going, we're going to sell it, actually. ABT, operating income taxes, is the following. It's from sales minus uh, cash operating expense minus depreciation, and so on. As you can see, the number, let me just check it. Yes, it's correct, and in here, we have higher. Then the tax is, uh, here is given 35%. Forty-five. Okay, that means I'm going to use to thirty-five. Okay, great. Then operating income after tax is equal to nine thousand seven hundred fifty. Depreciation uh, we're adding back. Okay, and we are getting the operating cash flow. We so all the procedure is the same, guys. It doesn't change. Everything is the same that we used to do it. And 
We said that we're gonna sell it for 5 million, this asset that we paid 100 million, okay? We paid 100 million, okay, there's one question. Dr. Amshan, sorry, you should not, shouldn't we calculate the position for four years if useful life? Under straight, straight line, guys, uh, that's very true, but in the question it mentions that you're, oops, sorry. Here's the question again. The asset life of the, will be three years, okay? The depreciation is based on the asset life of three years. It's a useful life of the, actually the project itself. The new product is estimated to have useful life, okay? We're talking about the product, not the asset that we paid actually for it. Now, uh, after tax operating cash flow is 35,042 and we got it, then is the time to calculate the salvage value, salvage value with the terminal. So after tax salvage value, and we are selling for 5 million, and we know there is a change in networking capital, each, which is equal to 10 million. Return will be 10. We know it. It's search sure. Return of networking capital. And our Okay, it's 10,000. And this is, uh, okay, let me just make some correction here. Sorry? Yes, please. Uh, why didn't you write uh, depre uh, enter depreciation in the last year? Uh, why I didn't calculate depreciation for the last year? Very good question. The question is provided this year. It says that uh, depreciation is based on the asset life of three years. Not under this, but we are using under a uh, um, straight line zero to zero, okay? Straight line depreciation method to zero, okay? We will do it later, this uh, modified accelerated cost recovery system, but I want you to understand the difference, how it affects the tax and how it affects the uh, depreciation methodology itself, uh, the cash flow. So we are applying the straight line to zero, which means we're gonna use that asset for three years. After three years, it will be, that's it. It cannot be used anymore. We are selling it, reselling, okay? Okay, yes, I got it, thank okay. you. Okay, okay. Now, uh, so salvage value, we are selling it for, uh, question says 5 million. Where is it? Uh, here, it says we are selling for 5 million. And the tax rate is 35%, okay? So that means that if we are selling for 5 million, we are making some money on it. That means that we should subtract the tax of 5 million. 5 million should be taxed. Taxed, 5 million taxed at 35%, which is, uh, if you tax it, like say 5,000, Was 50,000 before. Yeah. Uh, it's, I put it 50,000, it should be 5,000, sorry. Thank you. It, if it's in millions, like 5,000 minus this amount. That would give me a net salvage value. Okay. And in total, uh, we're gonna have this plus this. Okay, this is total value of terminal operating cash flow. And what what else we're gonna calculate? The cash flow is 110. Okay, it's automatically calculated. This plus this, and our NP is automatically calculated. Okay. All right. Can you explain again how you found salvage value? Yes, sure. 3, surely, surely, of course. Uh, now, uh, look, we are selling that we are selling for 5 million, yes? Okay, it's 5,000, okay? Mm -hmm. 5 million, it's 5,000. I'm using like 5,000 here, it's 5 million. We are selling for 5 million. Uh, that means that uh, I'm dealing with the thousands, like 5,000, it's 120 million. 
So, you know, let me just reduce this to, because I, I was using three zeros, okay, to make it more consistent numbers. Sorry, my mistake that I used thousands instead of the, uh, just 140 to be consistent with the question. Okay. Now it's on, and this is uh, then will be five. This will be five, and this will be 